Hi everybody, and welcome to this Amnesia the Dark Descent speedrun tutorial. I am making this because I have recently seen a spike in views and interactions on my previous video. And in my opinion that previous video was a bit lacking and just overall not very well done and not very educational. So here is attempt number two. Now before we get into the cool tricks, um, we have to do some settings, which is boring, but it's very necessary. So select your account, make one if you don't have one yet, um, and then go to options and the graphical settings, which is where we start. The first thing we'll do is up the gamma to its max. You know, you need to be able to see well, to play well, and line up well. And speaking of lining up well, we are going to reduce our texture quality to fucking sand. So put it all to low. Texture quality low, try your filter nearest, blah 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 blah. Just follow what I do. Now the reason we do this is because when everything looks chunky, it's easier to line up your strats and normally I'm a bit of a cocky bastard and just you know play on, <laughs> on the best settings but um, for the sake of this tutorial I'll play on the lowest settings because it also makes it easier for you to copy my moves so now we've done all of the video settings let's move to the input now the Steam version is the ideal version to run this game. I think it's like version 3.0 and with version 3.0 also comes integration of controller support. Now you, might, you may think that's cool but it's kind of a pain in the ass because now we have to do a whole other step to uh, get our control set up right. So jump we want to bind to mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down but because of controller support we have to do that outside of the game this is a personal preference but crouch i like to bind to space so that i don't have to move my hand in order to crouch and you have to spam crouch quite quite a lot so use your pinky or use your thumb i prefer my prefer my thumb so i bind it to space um so that's all we can do in game for now. Some changes will need to need to restart to take effect. That's fine uh, because we have to restart either way. So as you can see, I am now in my documents folder. I will open Amnesia, main. Then open your Amnesia account, mine is labeled speedrun because I was very creative. And now open user keys. We've already bound the jump primary to mouse wheel up. So we're going to copy mouse button dot wheel up and paste that in the secondary. Now all we have to do is change mouse button wheel up to mouse button wheel down. Don't forget to use the capital D. Now we have one more thing to do. You see the interact one here, go to secondary and paste once again, mouse button wheel up. The reason we do this is so that we can get up ladders quicker, which is very important during literally one section in the game. Just a minor couple seconds time save, but it won't hurt. So just save, close this, and now go to user settings because we want to enable quick save which is right here allow quick save and change this to true no capital letters keep in mind though that if you want to do an official run you have to change the user settings file back to its original state so just put that one back to false whenever you're going to do an official run so now I'll hit save, close this, open game, and as you can see we're now playing 
Minecraft and Amnesia. Look at these fucking bricky ass settings. But that's exactly what we need, so let's go. So the game has started and we have control. The moment you anticipate, Alexander will say don't forget when you start the run. Step one is grab this helmet and put it down here. Maybe we can get a boost off of it later. Step two, open this door. Step three, grab this helmet and knock that one down for fun. Fuck, I missed. If you listen carefully, you can hear Daniel's body flop down. So that's when you start holding the D button. And so, as soon as you hear the rain, you hold the shift button. We hold the D button to inch our way towards the door. Now, for a second, Daniel will look up. And that's when you start holding S as well. Now you switch to W and try to force your way through the door. Just pretend you're playing Forza and imagine there's a racing line on the ground. Follow that. A rule of thumb is to always jump up and down the stairs. See if we can get a boost. Nope. Now you'll drop to the ground, but you will keep forcing yourself to get to the point where you want to be. Just keep forcing yourself to follow that Forza-esque racing line. Keep sticking to the right of the stairs or you'll find you'll have a decreasement in your movement speed. And now you're going to old archives. So from here on out, I'll start... Um, from here on out, I'll start doing from here on out every time we reach a new segment I'll just start doing it to show you what we need to learn and then after you I'll sh <laughs> after it fuck it from here on out every time we finish the segment I'll teach you how to do it and then after I'll just get into more detail so Let's do it on my own pace first, and then I'll tell you in more detail. Walk around the thing. And that's how more advanced player would do it. So now from the beginning okay so you reach this point now we have to walk around this little pink thing to trigger this screen shake effect. Once we've done that our movement speed will be increased. So now we can walk faster than we could before. That's important. So after you get out of that room, the screen will still be shaking, but what you'll do is get to the left of this beam, spam jump your way up here, now start adding the crouch button, and spam that too. I forgot to spam it. These little lines in between is what you want to watch out for. If you, you can get back in bounds by, by walking over them and yeah, that will happen. So what you would do as a smart good speedrunner is jump over them, jump over this one and boost yourself up here, jump down here and now what you're going to do is drop down and click the door. So one more time. See how slow we're sprinting? Oh, crap. 
bulb. And now we're a bit faster. Cool. So that was quite easy. Now here comes the harder part. I'll show you how it's done. That was essentially a perfect entrance hall segment. Now I'm going to teach you guys how to do it. You walk onto this little broken ridge. As you can see you have like two aligned grey big blowy pixels here. You point your cursor at that and just sprint and spam jump. Now you're up here. So you see this pillar? We need to get on top to this ledge, not this one, this one. So we do that by taking a step back. Don't sprint, just walk and spam jump. Sometimes when it doesn't work you can add switching A and D intermittently pressing those. So now we have to get into the windowsill and to do that we have to crouch jump. So what we're going to do is we're going to sprint this direction, we're going to sprint this direction, release sprint, that's very important because if you hold sprint while crouching you will uncrouch. So you release sprint, then press your crouch button and then you make it into the windowsill, like this, or not like that, like this. I'll do it one more time, so you jump up here. If you do it too aggressively you can bounce back. There we go, make sure that we're on this platform and on this one. Sprint outside and then crouch jump inside. Walk up to this little pole, sprint forward, press space and hit jump. Now your head is out here. So what we're gonna do now is walk back here, sprint until you see we're back lower. We're now no longer in the whoops, in the windowsill. I should quick save more often. Sorry about that. So once you go down, you'll want to make a 180 and land on an edge. I'll show you in a bit. Oh. Once again, I should save more often. Okay, so you make your way here, in that little edge, and then I did it way too slow, but you, what you want to do is when you start to sag down, just make 180 onto this edge. So now what you're going to do is you want to end up there, but to prevent taking falling damage, you're going to clip your body onto that thing, like that. And now just drop down and go into the refinery. Also a very important tip is that you should always hold the mouse button while loading screens happen. In this hallway you'll want to jump a lot. That's because there's a lot of objects on the ground that have a weird geometry. And we're going to use that geometry to gain speed. It's very random and sometimes you'll boost into the wrong direction. But that's essentially, essentially called a boost. Now watch this, this is the first monster and he's ignoring us. Why? Because we're in a flashback. So now the flashback ends and he'll stop ignoring us. Because we're so close to him, he tries to swing at us. But, because he tries to swing at us, he cannot run. So, essentially what happens is that we outrun him because he cannot run and we can. So what I did just there is just spam my way into that little 
uh, um, just spam yourself into the corner up there. So I'll explain more from now on. Just drop down and press the door. So this is a scary bit because of the water monster. You're going to run into this room, flip the switch up, and jump onto this box. Sometimes if you jump onto the box in advance, the water monster will be slower, and then he'll block your doorway once you get onto the chest. So in water, always try to spam jump because it's faster. And once you get in here, just drop two limbs into the water, wait for that little Karen to start chewing on it, then grab the wheel, crouch down, and very aggressively try to raise the gate. Now once you're through it, sprint, open the door, shouldn't care about what's behind you, grab the hollow needle, grab it again from your inventory, jam it in the door, and voila! Okay, so here you're gonna run through the door closely behind you, now, once you arrive here, you want to line yourself up with this little pixel. Don't sprint, just walk. Kinda shimmy your way up. And that's how you do it. You have to try to land on this thing because if you land back in the water, you'll take damage. And on the other side, well, I think you can figure that out. So just keep kind of jumping, don't worry about falling through. Just spam jump your way up here, walk over the board. Jump onto this little thing here. Onto the planks, you can fall through here, so just try to stick onto the planks. Jump from the plank to here. Now here you're going to try to glide with the slime. Down, back and bounce, and then click open the door to the back hall. Okay, so I messed a bunch of things up and had to make a cut, but let me explain to you what we're going to do here. So we're going to jump onto this railing, and look at this little pink brownish blob. Just sprint into it and spam jump. And that's it. Also, a common rule of thumb is hold W while the, the load screen is, is active. But don't hold sprint, because if you hold sprint and it finishes loading, it will just uh, not sprint. So I'll explain in a bit what I'm doing here. I'm just showing you what it looks like if you got it down. See that? That's what we're doing here in the study room. We're trying to collect the flow rod, but we're not going to jump all the way outside because that's slower. So we're just making our way down here as fast as we can, just sprint. Make yourself comfortable in this little nook. Look at the tree. Hold Shift and A. And it won't always be that smooth, but if it doesn't work, just try to wiggle your mouse a bit like this and see how that works. Same thing on the other side. Hold on. You just get into this little nook. Look at the elevator renovation plans. Then do the same thing on the other side. Just hold Shift and D. It is important to note that if you lose too much health, your speed will be impacted and that will be a very hard, if not impossible, thing to do. So here it's just easy, you spawn here, make a 90 degree turn as fast as you can, hold Q to lean a spam, click the door. I 
So here we go. A flashback triggers. You throw this thing away. Grab the laudanum. Jump over the, the drawer. Jump into this corner and go out of bounds. Smash the key. Grab it. And there you go out. But now I'll show you how it's done. So the flashback triggers. You throw this aside. Open the bottom, the middle drawer. Jump over this drawer. And now you're just gonna stand here and try to get yourself up onto that ledge. So, like that. It's pretty easy. You just jump through. If you own the PlayStation version of the game or the Xbox One, I don't know if there's an Xbox One version, but those are a different version than this version so your speedrun pretty much ends here you cannot get through this if you're on the PlayStation version now to grab the key you smash it into this room and then you're getting the, the camera pans back to, to the thing be careful not to get rid of that painting because that triggers a flashback too so one more time Now you're safe. So now we're getting to the shittiest part, which is storage. I hate this part. You're gonna be glad you have enabled quick save. So just like other long segments, I won't show how it's done first. I'll just explain it as I go along. You walk down the stairs and make a left turn. You see a door here, open it, close it behind your back. You grab this little box, shove it into the, into the, what's this called, cupboard, I don't know. So that you can jump from this box onto that one and up here. You grab the drill bit, and as you can hear, a monster spawns. So you make your way up onto this closet. And... What you're going to do next is try to spam jump yourself on this side, like like this, on this side of that pillar, get through the roof here. Be careful not to throw off. It's usually safer not to hold sprint. So what you're going to do here is make your way up onto this thing. Don't walk over the hallway, that will cause a flashback to trigger. So, I use that little thing there as a boost. Make my way to this pillar. And now where I have my cursor pointed, there's another pillar over there. And soon as you see light, you'll jump. So, jump. Land on there. Cool. So now what you're going to do is jump on this thing, and then jump here because from this pillar the floor behind there is gone so what you're gonna do is jump onto this beam and just circle jump around that cool can you see this little crooked curve in the wood you try to mash yourself in there and land on the barrels there to prevent falling damage so you, so you sprint you make a 180 and land on it if you're practicing and you miss the barrels, you might notice that you don't take falling damage. Uh, once again, that is because you quick save and quick load when you practice, and that's also the reason this isn't allowed. So you close the door behind yourself. And my sanity is completely fucked, so my controls are fucked. So, um, I'm going to do this real quick because I've been standing in the dark so long. Don't worry, I'll just 
cut. Actually, on second hand, I don't think I'll cut because it's good to show you what it's like to do storage a bit quicker. Come on. Also, I just realized that I didn't have to cut because if I just grabbed the flow rods, my sanity would have increased again. So, whatever, you just grab a box, place it on top of here, grab these two, and spam jump your way on top of here, together with the crouch spam. So now it's just really easy to get up here, just spam jump a little bit. Cool. So this is where I always used to kill my own runs, because I missed this thing and then you have to start doing the storage all over again. But you just jump and land here jump and land here so you see this crooked thing in the wood again which means that we're going to spam ourselves into it which for some reason won't work There we go. So now we just have to grab the two last drill bits here, drill part. Drill part number two. Also every time you enter that last room I was just in, it'll trigger a random sanity event which can sometimes mean you'll see weird shit but it's not that scary, don't worry. Whoa. And that was storage. Now you're going to try to walk right to this pillar, because doing so opens this door for you. Now we're going to go to machine room, and before we open the door, we're going to do two things. We're going to grab the key and wait for Daniel to finish his sentence so that the dialogue continues during the loading screen. This first quote-unquote puzzle is just walk up here from right to left, place the levers up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now for quote unquote puzzle number two, you do yellow, red, blue, no you don't, you do red, uh, yellow, blue, red. So you grab that cog wheel, throw it down, do the same thing with this one. Throw it into the room. See if you can just preemptively throw them into their right spots. Whatever, good enough. Open this thing. Throw one coal. Two coal. 
grab three coal. Colby Bryant. Oh, you have to be shitting me. Oh my god, are you... <laughs> are you for real? There we go. I'll just spam these on here. Yeah, I gotta admit, this is not my most successful part. And now just throw that down. I almost always take damage here from the shadow. It's it's pretty much unavoidable, I think. See? So now we have to go to the elevator. And because that lever from the elevator is so thin, what I do is I don't grab it like this. What I do is I grab it here. Does the same thing. So now we just have to wait a minute. This is always the part of a run where I check my text and stuff. So, this part here is what many people consider to be the scariest part of the run. But don't worry, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. You just grab that piece of wood and drag it back so that it flies over the rock. Then here, to increase your speed during the flashback, you grab this rock, and now you're a little faster. But sometimes the rope just falls from your hands, whatever. So you grab the hammer. And here I will take a second to explain something. You see where my cursor is? In that angle, on the top of the stairs, a grunt will spawn. Now, your first instinct may be to take as much distance from it as you can, but as I explained earlier, when a grunt takes a swing at you, he cannot, he cannot move at the same time, so you just walk past him, and then he'll miss you, and then he has to wait a second before he can start walking, at which we will grab the chair with the oil on it, and make sure you don't grab the oil but the chair, turn back around, throw it in his face, then walk through the door to trigger a flashback in which we are safe. Grab the chair, throw in his ugly stupid face and then open the door and fuck. Yeah, that was to be expected. So now you move the bed and combine your items just preemptively. Grab the hammer and chisel. Damn, I really fucked up my health. Okay, so here, once you reach the rocks, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick the left one up, throw it, the right one, throw it, pick this one out, throw it, and then 
just spam that one away by clicking right, left, right, left, right. That's it. Now we arrive at this rock. So we'll jump on the left side, jump on this one, and here we start spamming crouch as well. So now we're on top here. These little pillars can boost you, but they can also boost you out of bounds, which is not good. So be careful with that. So you make your way to the door and then you do it, blah blah blah. I'll show you once more. Oh wait, I accidentally saved here. Whoops, whatever. And now we have the entrance to Cistern. Alright, so if you walk too far forward, as you can see, a flashback will trigger and that costs time, and time is one thing that we cannot afford. So watch the bottom of the screen, and I'll align it up with these tiles. Then I'll just look in this little T section here, sprint to my left, and spam jump once I hit the pipe. I fuck that up. That gives me a chance to do it again. So it was something like this, and this, and then just do this, and now you're on the pipe. Which means that we'll just jump on over it. Cool. So we avoided this flashback trigger right here. And now we're going to make our way to this piece here. So what we're going to do is we're going to nudge ourselves in here and look at this black spot here. Sprint, spam jump, and make sure you land on this little ledge. And then make yourself back into this corner, and spam jump to get out of that. So now we're going to the morgue, the infamous first appearance of the brute, but don't worry. I'll get to that later. So, the first thing you do is you walk onto this ledge, and walk onto this pillar, you see this little, like, where the dark pixel meets the, light, meets the light pixel? That's your vertical axis, so just look a bit up, you spam for a jump, spam jump wheel twice, and then make a quick 180 before you fall off the map. So now we're out of bounds, and because there's a trigger there, we have to get up here, just spam jump and alternate A and D, and now we have voided the flashback. Here you're going to want to land here, watch out for the side of the door that can boost you back in bounds. Jump around, oh my god. As you can see, I'm probably not the best speedrunner to teach you this. Am I a fucking idiot? Like, never have I ever fucked that up. So grab the copper tube, grab the laudanum, land down here and now look at this guy's little toes look at those toes so once you got it lined up uh, you just sprint forward and spam jump bottom drawer another laudanum drill into the guy's head make a syringe and the moment you touch it is when you black out, which as many of you know is when the brute will spawn, so the first thing you do is you, you fucking book it to the door and try to get through there. So da -da -da -da, go go go. Open the door, get through here, and that was that, we're safe. 
So you come here, you see these two pillars, you jump to the one on the left, get on the left side of it. Look at this little, little bit here. And then just hold shift and D. But this is quite a risky one. You can fall off easy. And now you use the other pillar to get back on top. And now we have to make way to the sewers, but as you can see, the doors are still uh, closed or whatever. No way, we can we can get down there. So we go here, we go here, and as you can see, there's this little corner in the wall because of you know the, the poor geometry. So we're going to try to use that to get through. It's very finicky, but. You can kind of slide yourself. See, I almost had it. Usually it's faster if you just do it all in one go. It's like, bam. There's no real setup for it either. It's just super random. Alright, let me try to do it a bit faster. That usually helps. Whoops. And my game crashed. That's great. Give me a second. had it it's about like right here where you need to line yourself up into there you go and I just make your way down here now if it really really fails if there's no way you can get through here that's all. You're just like nudging yourself in there for minutes and minutes on end. Like even if you get the lineup like this, it won't work. Then what you can do is this little backup strat where you jump here. Whoa. You jump um, like this. You keep sprinting and tapping jump. You're not supposed to be able to get through there. What? Just do that. And once you stop shaking, you can usually get. Now I'm shaking again. There we go. You can usually get there. And that's a bit more consistent, but it's also pretty slow. So now we're going to the infamous sewers. Like, in my opinion, the hardest part of the run. So here's what you're going to do. Gonna drop down, grab the ladder last moment. And oh no, what's that? It's just a poofer. So you just follow the path I just took and then jump into this corner. And now you're going to hit save and exit and then just spam enter to get back into the game like this. But that's how you save in an official run where you cannot use quick saves and quick loads. But I'm just going to use quick save right now, just teaching you how to do it. So you sprint forward into this little corner and then you intermittently, very softly, tap A until you get to this side. Now that is at first one of the hardest parts. Then you just spam jump and sprint and hold 
just tap A and D to get on top of here. Now you're going to jump onto this and jump onto here. And here's how you do it. Like, this is what you want to do. Um, excuse me. This is what you want to do. Never mind, that's what you don't want to do. This is what you want to do. Actually, that's also not what you want to do because it damages you. I'm just very good at showing you what not to do right now. Like, that's what you want to do. So how you do it is you get into this corner as much as you can. Oh. Alright, that was my demonstration of literally everything that go, can go wrong on this bit. Just get into, into this corner. Over like this and then you line yourself up with that perpendicular to this so you took a step away from that corner take a step back from this corner and then you just spam jump while walking not sprinting and then you drop down here and then here you gotta watch out because sometimes this can push you off the map once you're through here that was it, that's pretty much the hardest part of the run. It takes a while to get down good enough to do it without saving. I think, I've, I haven't reached a point yet. And now you see this giant ladder. And if you recall, we did assign the interact button to the mouse so up. So first you're going to use your left mouse button to mount onto the ladder. Then just spam up. Cool. So now through here, and you will meet this wooden beam. So you walk up it, sprint up, just spam, jump yourself into the corner, and then start spamming crouch. That will put you through there. Now we have to go all the way down there without taking damage. So how you do that is you look at this piece here and start sprinting. And then you'll land on here without taking damage. So you jump around here into this little corner. Oh, I fucked it up. So you jump around, jump around. And now you want to get on there, but don't worry, you can just walk here. Spam jump yourself up there. Walk on this side, but be careful not to slide off. And then jump your way around. And now we're almost in the choir. Which is also the hardest part of the game. But not in the way that we'll do it. So the way we're going to do it is, is it's quite easy. But I'll show you the alternative super hard way. So you're going to keep jumping on the sides of these things to get some momentum. What are my intentions, Daniel? Salvation. It used to be yours, but now you only see misplaced revenge. How do you justify your violence? So the last laudanum in the game is here. Or the last laudanum in the speed run, I mean. To avoid the jump scare, you can just cut this corner, but the jump scare doesn't actually drain your sanity, so it doesn't matter. And now we have to walk back out to grab the other last orb pieces. And we'll make it to this pillar. So you just kind of bam spin jump up there that's all there is to it I assume that if you've gotten this far into the tutorial that you know how to spam jump up things and if not that's totally fine too just leave a comment or ask in the discord chat for help that's that's what it's for so an alternative way that's much more complicated 
and much more risky is to use the gap jump here which goes as follow you see this pillar you just jump up against it and line up sort of like this watch my pixels now I'll just quick save but in normal runs you would just use the actual save function and now it's jump and it's super fucking hard you jump first press W second and then once you hit the slope you jump again There you go. Now it's important because there's a brute spawn trigger over there that you just stick to this wall as much as possible. So here I like to do a little pirouette and use that thing to boost myself, but sometimes you can take damage. Now if your sanity is low, mine is fine, but if it's low, just grab a rock, throw it at that thing and grab this, and that will improve it. Grab this piece. Now we take a left here, boost yourself up this thing, and now you'll see this little pile of rubble here, get into this corner. If you're an amateur I would save here, um, then you just kind of see where this pixel here ends, that's your vertical axis. Spam jump yourself through there. It, this one isn't as precise as rocket science, so it's not that hard. Then this one you can pretty much just walk through, maybe just jump a little if you get stuck, but that's it. Same one for that one. Now this one can also be a bit difficult. Just watch out that you don't accidentally push yourself back into bounds. Spam jump your way up top. This one's also quite difficult. Like, it's pretty hard to get onto that pillar without, you know, getting pushed off. But what you can do is what I just did. I never thought of that before. Just get on the other side of this and do it like that. Fuck. I got myself inbounds. But that's not too big of an issue anymore here. Just get yourself on top of that. Jump down here. Grab the last orb shard and now drop down. Alright, so now you just immediately make a 180 and click on the door. You can do it like while the screen is still wide, just intuitively make 180 and click it. Spam jump your way up here. Click the door, that's it. Make your way over here, you see this little little nook next to the last pillar, jump into there. Um, sometimes you can fuck up here, but it's not too big of a time loss. Just look at the black dot and just wiggle yourself through the pillar by sprinting into it. There you go. Now we have to get on top of there without 
going back in bounds or overshooting it or dropping down and falling down so what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk straight up against it take a step back then without sprinting just press W and spam jump maybe walk a bit more to the side so here more onto this wall There you go. Just nudge yourself through this wall. It's not that hard. And now comes the transept. So here, just kind of lean around the corner and grab the orb. Now, here, perpendicular to these bricks, you'll walk up. And then you're going to sprint into the pillar to the left and make a sweeping movement with the mouse. So you kind of nudge yourself into the right direction. There you go. Don't cut corners here because it'll definitely lead to your death. And transept is a long one to fill. Just spam boost yourself up here. You have to glide your way down one of these pillars, I always take damage. Then grab the piece. It's kind of difficult to reach. Walk back. Once again, don't cut corners. Now we have to get back inbound. So we're just gonna do that. It's usually not that easy or quick though, it's, it's random. Like sometimes you have to spend 20 seconds nudging yourself in there and sometimes you just bloop back in the bounds. Grab the last orb piece and I'll make a run for it. Right, that was transept. Okay, so here you're trying to line up as fast as you can before this screen shake starts. What you're gonna try to do is you're gonna jump into the corner and watch about this pixel. Sprint at it, jump through, make a 90 degree turn and go over it because the moment you clip through you can either clip back on the other side of the pillar or make a 90 degree turn and fall down or you're supposed to is clip through make a 90 degree turn jump and then just spam yourself up here come on there we go I'll do it once more for you Alright, so the game crashed again. Amnesia is a very sensitive game. That's not the reason I cut though, I cut because that took me super long to repeat. Okay, now I have no idea how to get that down there without losing damage. Um, sometimes it's very hard to clip through, but if, you, if that's the case, just grab this thing and try to throw it. Usually doing that lines you up properly. And now we're going to go to the chancel. In the chancel, we're going to die. You see, the thing is... Jesus Christ. Once you open this door, you see a bunch of grunts. So you run back and then suddenly you die. So what you do... Whoops. Okay, sorry I fucked that up, I wanted to show it a bit faster. What you do is, the moment you open the door and walk out about 1 meter or 3 feet, you turn around and walk back as fast as you can to get to the trigger faster. So, 
so now that you're here this is what you're going to do you're going to crawl towards the little what do you call this spile ring it off grab it jump through here jam a stick in here and because the screen is shaking you just do it like that use the rusty key to go through here now the shadow will chase you here's what you're gonna do jump to the right side of this door grab hold of the door open it to push everything away now you get to a t-section you run right, hear the rubble, turn left. Fire whoever did the architecture here. Jump on here, it's okay if you fail, just use this to to gain some speed, keep some speed. Now you're almost there. Just jump up the stairs some more and now you're in the nave so just run forward go through the door here run forward go through the door here run forward go through the door here get under the beam you don't have to crouch open this door I'll hit quick save now because here's what you're gonna do okay that's what you're not gonna do here's what you're gonna do jump on here jump on the shadow slime net jump on here and then down fuck actually I have plenty of lava now. so just go down here ignore the grippa jump to the chest to prevent falling damage stick to the side here to prevent shadow damage open the door and now back to the chancel spam up the stairs like you always do you see a brute there just ignore it Now, this is about to be a very convoluted way to get out of bounds, so the things you do is you stand here, you just walk through the wall, and that's it. So now you spam jump your way up here. Try to get on top so that you don't slide down. Look at this corner right here. Sprint jump on top to it, and just spam jump. Now, this is one that I always fail at, or use to at least. Look down as far as your neck allows. And the moment your cursor crosses, or your, your crosshair crosses this little wall here, that's when you hit jump. Then again. Now you can kind of... Whoa. Now you just kind of spam yourself up here. Jump on top of that, you'll take damage. And now you're in the inner sanctum. If you can, just jump as slowly as you can to get a boost. Get the lever down to to close the door. Now what you're going to do, it's a bit hard when it's shaky, but you're like down the middle here, there's this line that kind of has a weird geometry thing. So it pushes you down, and once it does so, just try to wiggle yourself I sometimes spam jump. I'm not the best teacher at this because I always freeze here. It never lets me through. There we go. And that was Inner Sanctum. Now here's the orb chamber. Like, the first thing you're gonna do is walk up to the spitter, click it, hold it, and then there you go. Topple it, now this one. You are so close, 
and the moment you let this one go, bam, that's where your run ends. And that was it. That's your entire speedrun tutorial. You have just completed Amnesia The Dark Descent. And now I have one thing left to do, which is... Um, I don't remember. I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. Now, if you do complete runs, I would check out what your worst segments are, and then just look up tutorials for those individual segments. I would like to add, I should have said this at the beginning, I am not one of the best speedrunners in this game. My record is like 31 minutes, and the, the reason I'm making this anyway is because there was a lack of beginner tutorials. So, here you go, a beginner tutorial. Yeah, that was it. Have a nice day.